All right, Shalom. First and foremost, as always, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash. Double honors to the Apostle Elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect. Uh, this will be a short lesson, and uh, just wanted to go into how uh, this is why the scriptures emphasize, and this is why we also emphasize, uh, as I'm quoting uh, Sirach chapter 5, verse 7, make no tarrying when turning to the Lord. For in your security, uh, you shall perish in the day of vengeance. And I'll get that scripture as well. But I just want to use this event that happened, uh, whether it was yesterday or maybe sometime over the weekend, uh, this event happened. And this is dealing with this woman called Elise Finch that uh, if you ever watch the CBS Morning News, that's where I know her from. Sometimes I watch it looking for things to see what's going on in the world. Um, I heard it from my mother. She said, uh, my mother mentioned it this morning, saying how she uh, passed away. She was watching the news and she heard how she uh, passed away. Now, I'm not going to go into this article, but uh, you could just look it up. Uh, you can see her name there and you could uh, look it up on CBS uh, New York. Right. But this woman either passed yesterday or, you know, um, uh, maybe probably over the weekend. However, it went down. She has passed and now she is in the spiritual room. And now she is at rest. And this is a video in no way attacking, uh, you know, this woman. She's at rest now or her husband because she had a husband and uh, I believe she had a daughter as well. But this is to bring some edification on to why when we're out there, we're preaching the seriousness about turning back to the Lord. We're telling you, you so-called blacks, Latinos and Native American Indians that you are supposed to turn back to your God because your God is the God of the Israelites because you are Israelites. Right. And your God's name is Yahweh and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. That is the true name of the Heavenly Father and his son. And we emphasize turning back to the Lord because this is what type of things that the Lord can do. The Lord can kill your family members or kill your woman or kill your children for you being disobedient and not wanting to hear the words of the Lord. When we're out there uh, pursuing to Jeremiah, if I'm not mistaken, chapter one, verse five, uh, we are prophets unto the nations. We're not just a prophet's unto our nation but we're also prophets unto all the nations right but mostly to our people and we are out there to warn our people to tell our people to repent and to turn back to the heavenly father because if you don't turn back to the heavenly father think of it like the dynamic between obviously a father and their child if your child is disobedient and doesn't want to listen to you you're going to beat them for their disobedience you're going to punish them and how the heavenly father punishes is through death right this is not Again, we're we're preaching the truth. We're not here to, you know, be like the Christian church or those pastors in the churches and soft coat this for you. Now, again, I'm going to be respectful, of course, because, you know, I'm not going to sit there and say, good for this woman. This is what she gets. No, the scriptures tell us also in Sirach, we are all worthy of death. But I'm using this as an example of make no tearing to turn to the Lord, because now there's a child out there without a mother. Now there's a husband out there who doesn't have his wife. Why? Because you, our people are disobedient and they don't want to turn back to the Lord. And this is the punishment. This is the things that happen. This is the sorrow that the Heavenly Father can bring because you don't want to turn back to him. Because you, uh, what our people don't understand is when they sit there and say, oh, okay, well, I hear that we're Israelites, but I don't, I don't agree with that or I don't hear what you're saying. It doesn't change the fact that you're still being disobedient to the Lord. It doesn't change the fact that it is the truth that our people fit the curses. So when you do these things, when you don't turn back to the Lord, you're pretty much saying, forget the Lord, it's to hell with you, right? But you have to understand what our people need to understand is the Lord's to hell with you is a lot stronger because the Lord could bring again sorrow. Because like I mentioned, now there's a husband who is mourning for his wife. Now there's a daughter who does, who's wondering, when is mommy coming home? Where's mommy? Is she coming back? And now you have to break down the concept of death to a daughter. Cause I believe her daughter's young. She looks like she's probably like maybe five or less. I could be wrong. And this is why we emphasize to turn back to the Lord. Right. So enough, uh, you know, um, rambling. Uh, let me get the precepts. The first precept I want to start off with is in uh, the book of Psalm. This is Psalm uh, 68 and verse 20. It says, he that is our God is the God of salvation unto the most high, the Lord belong the issues from death. <clears throat> so the Lord, the heavenly father is the one that is able to deliver you from death as is written. Uh, if I, if I'm not mistaken, also, and, uh, let me get that 
maybe that will edify the point a little bit more. I believe it's Deuteronomy 32 and 31. Or is it 31 and 32? I might have that mixed up. <clears throat> hmm. Give me a second. Okay, it's 39. I'm sorry. This is Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39. See now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. So the Heavenly Father, the true God that made the heavens and earth, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai, that is the true name of the Heavenly Father, the Son. Again, Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father. And Yahweh Shai, right, being the true name of the Son whom the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, they are able to, like it says, kill and make alive. So they're able to put someone to death, right, cause someone to die, or cause someone to live. That's why it said in Psalm 68 and 20, unto the Lord be, uh, belongeth the issues from death. So the Heavenly Father, through His Son, are able to either, again, using Deuteronomy 32 and 39 to back it up, to either save you from death or allow you to die. Now you have to ask yourself, why would the Lord allow somebody to die? Because you see, if you go into the Christian church, they'll preach and they'll say, oh, such and such was such a good person. You know, I'm not being a hypocrite. I've also lost a, a friend of mine that was pretty much like a brother to me also. So I understand the pain of this. But again, this is for the truth's sake and our people need the truth. So in the Christian church, and I was there at my uh, friend's funeral, they preach and say that, you know, such and such was such a good person. This was, uh, they'll be greatly missed. And it's like, you have to understand, if this person was such a good person, then why did the Lord allow them to be taken away? If this person was such a good person, and if the husband, you know, I'm going to touch some, so, uh, some pretty, you know, soft spots here, but again, this has to be said. If this person was such a good person, right? And if, you know, the husband really needed his wife and she really needed to be there for a daughter, why the Lord just pretty much destroy a family you know why did he take away the wife because we have to understand that we have all committed sins as the scriptures say we are uh, we all fall short of the glory and again going back to our people being disobedient and not wanting to turn back unto the heavenly father we have to assume at some point in this woman's life she has heard the message of the israelites and i don't know if that's the same for her husband you know but uh just giving the example that at some point this woman had to have heard the message of the israelites and her not turning back unto the Lord, you know, the Lord uh, pretty much took her out for that, right? And now to use a scripture to back up what I'm saying in Job, because everybody will say, oh, you know, uh, such and such was such a good person. Why'd they have to go, right? Now, this is Job chapter 4, verse 7. It says, I rem I'm sorry, remember, I pray thee, whoever perished, which perished meaning died, right, being innocent. Or where were the righteous cut off? Now, again, using the example of like pastors in the church, they'll say, oh, this person was such a good person. But we cannot go off of what man sees. We have to see what the Lord sees, right? If you read the book of Samuel, it talks about how the Lord looketh not on man, right? But uh, the Lord looketh on, uh, I'm sorry, the Lord sees things not as man sees it, roughly paraphrasing. But the Lord sees things, you know, according to he's checking someone's heart, right? And that was going into King David, uh, well, at the time, not King David, but uh, David, when uh, Samuel had to uh, anoint Saul, right? So the Lord is not looking how we see things of, oh, okay, well, I see this person. He's such a nice person. That's such a this and that. But you have to get out from what you see and how does the Lord see things. Yeah, this person may be a charitable person. Yeah, this person may be friendly and things like that. But if you're being disobedient to the Lord, if you're not turning back to the Lord, it matters about how he sees things because his judgment is what stands. His judgment is final. You see, we can't put anybody to death. We can't keep someone alive or, uh, you know, put someone to death. The Heavenly Father has power over that, right? So we cannot look at things and say that, okay, this person is such a good person because they do this and they do that. It's not about how man sees things. It's about how the Lord sees things. It's about how the Lord sees your heart, which is your mind. What type of conduct or uh, how are you, uh, what type of conduct do you have? How are you? How are you to him? Right. How do you treat him? Because 
everybody has a relationship with the Lord or should be seeking one with the Lord. And when I say everybody, I'm talking about Israelites, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, right? And we should be seeking to have a relationship with the Lord. And how you treat the Lord is pretty much how he's going to treat you as well. So again, going back to the example, if you say forget the Lord, the Lord will forget you, right? So seeing as how, you know, um, if you say, uh, I don't believe that, I don't agree with that, I don't see that, that's pretty much being disobedient to the Lord, not turning back unto him, and the Lord's going to have to see you for that. And the way that the Lord visits you or sees you for that is through death. That is how the Lord punishes. But there is other money ways that the Lord doesn't have to put someone to death or cause someone to die. He could just have someone, um, you know, get into a car accident and become a, a, a paralyzed. And now you have to deal with that and suffer that thing, right? For the rest of your life, you're paralyzed and have you suffering. See, these things that happen in, in life are not just coincidences or, or, or why did this happen? There is a reason why these things happen. And again, using Job for uh, Job chapter seven, verse four, right? Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent. So whether that was my friend or this woman or anybody that you know in life, and this is a hard thing to, you know, uh, get into, but this is the truth of the truth of the matter. These are the things that happen. We have to deal with reality. And these are the things that we're dealing with rea in reality in life. Like I said, a man has just lost his wife. A child has just lost their mother, right? And although this is a could be a touchy subject, but still the truth has to come out as to why these things happen. Because again, uh, people say, why this? Well, we're giving you the why as to this. You so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians need to repent and stop playing the games and turn back unto the Heavenly Father. Because a lot worse in these last days are going to happen, which we're living in the last days, but the last days are the last days. And these things will get a lot worse. The Lord can do much worse than this. Right. So again, Job chapter four, verse seven. Remember, I pray thee, whoever perished being innocent. And again, using this woman or my friend as an example, if they were really innocent, if they were really good, why did the Lord take them out? Another example is Kobe Bryant. People say Kobe Bryant was such a good dude. He was such a great basketball player. He was such this and that. But he died in a car. Uh, I'm sorry, not a car crash, in a plane crash with his daughter. If God saw Kobe Bryant as such a great man and such a this and that, why had the Lord allow Kobe Bryant and his daughter to die in a plane crash? You got to consider these things. Again, we cannot see things from how we see things. We have to see things from how the Lord sees things. As is written in the scriptures, if I'm not mistaken, maybe in Isaiah 55, uh, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways. So the way the Lord does things or the way the Lord thinks is not on how our mortal, how man sees things or how us mortals see things. This man is coming. And when I say this man, I'm talking about the Heavenly Father is coming from the perspective of a God. He's thinking on a God level. He's seeing things on a God level. He's thinking on a God level. He's doing things on a God level because he is the God uh, of the heavens uh of uh, the one that created the heavens and the earth. So this man has a much higher perspective on things that we wouldn't, uh, we, that we don't have. Um, another precept uh, would be Sirach, the fifth chapter. Uh, going into that precept that I was quoting, uh, the point is in verse seven, but I'll read from verse one. And uh, when you read these, I believe it's like the, uh, first eight verses goes into uh, being presumptuous, right? As a matter of fact, uh, let me just pull up a definition real quick. I'll do this on my laptop. Uh, what does uh, presumptuous mean? Just to give some uh, further education, edification. Right? So it says presumptuous here, right? Just a simple Google uh, definition says of a person or their behavior failing to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. Right. And some of the synonyms here, it says brazen, overconfident, arrogant, egotistical, overbold or bold. Right. Uh, <laughs> it even has here fresh, which Caribbeans like to say you fresh, meaning, you know, you, you know, you're too bold. Right. You have hasty. Right. But I would say or cocky as well. But uh, some of the better uh, synonyms here, I would say are brazen, overconfident, 
arrogant, right? Or even bold, right? So I believe these first verses, uh, verse eight, uh, first eight verses are pretty much going into, you know, not being presumptuous. So again, this is Sirach chapter five or Ecclesiasticus uh, chapter five, verse one. It says, set not thy heart, which your heart meaning your mind, upon thy goods and say not, I have enough for my life. So you can't look at the things that you've accumulated over your life and say, I'm good, I'm straight. Again, we have to seek out a relationship you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians have to seek out a relationship with your God. It's not just about having a relationship with people in the world. You must also have a relationship with the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shai. Right? So it's, again, it says, Set not thy heart upon thy goods, and say not, I have enough for my life. So you can't look again at the things that you have in life, say, I'm straight, I have all that I need, what more do I want? Uh, follow not thine own mind, and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart, right? You can't follow the ways of your mind thinking that what you're doing is correct, that what you're doing is the right way. Again, like I was bringing out how the Lord doesn't see things how man sees it, right? But the Lord looks upon the heart, right? So uh, scriptures tell you in Jeremiah that the heart is deceitful above all things and who can know it? Also in Proverbs 3 and 5, it says, uh, matter of fact, I'll get that because that I do not know off the top of my head. Right. This is Proverbs chapter three, verse five. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Right. So we're not supposed to lean unto our own understanding and thinking what is good or what's this or what's that. No, we're supposed to at least to some degree have a mind of what the uh, of the Lord and say, OK, how would the Lord see things? How is the how would the Lord see this? Right. It says, verse six, in all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. And that's what, again, what we're trying to tell our people is to depart from evil. Stop being disobedient. Stop wanting to live this wayward life and come back unto the Heavenly Father and you may be saved. Now, of course, we know that not all Israel is going to repent. But still, this message, we are still to put out the message. Right. Because we don't know who is going to repent, who's going to turn back. If you if you look at our uh, if you look at us who are, uh, you know, out there on the highways and byways now, I'll use myself as an example. I've told brothers this before. I would have never thought I'd be doing this. So, you know, we are still to preach the gospel. We are still to preach the word, uh, you know, in hopes, obviously, to wake up the elect. Right. But again, we don't know who is of the elect. So we're supposed to go out there and tell our people and warn our people. Right. Reprove, rebuke, rebuke with all long suffering and tell our people to turn back those who would uh those who the, who the lord has given ears to hear and eyes to see um verse three it says and say not who shall control me for my works for the lord will surely revenge thy pride right so you can't sit there and say who's gonna have control of me you know so you mean to tell me that god can take away all this because again people don't think that the lord can take away someone's wife the lord can take away your kids the lord can you know take away your riches and things like that right because you're so confident in what you have and all the work that you've built up to having this so it's like man all this work that i've put in all this time it's like and you tell me god's just gonna take that why why would the lord take away didn't did he not give me all this riches did he not give me the opportunity again we cannot see things from how we see things we have to see things from the perspective of the lord yeah you may have all these riches yeah you may have all these things but again where is your relationship with the lord right these are the things that you have to consider so again uh i'll read verse three again it says and say not who shall control me for my works for the lord will surely revenge thy pride right say not i have sinned and what harm happeneth unto me for the lord for the lord is long suffering he will in no wise let thee go so you can't sit there and say okay I, i've uh I've done anything wrong, you know, uh, um, you know, what's going to happen to me? It isn't the Lord for, uh, you know, uh, willing to forgive and things like that. So it says, uh, verse five, it says concerning propitiation, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. Right. And say not and say not his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. Slack. Yeah, I misspoke on that. Right. So verse six is what I was trying to say. Uh, verse six, it says, and say not his mercy is great. 
he will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. So it's like, okay, so I went off. I did this, you know. Okay, well, you know, the Lord is merciful because remember, don't they always say that in the churches? The Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is always loving and this and that. So it's like, okay, I made a mistake here. Okay, well, I'll, you know, I'll just continue living my life. But the Lord will forgive me. The Lord, you know, the Lord, always, the Lord, people said, the Lord knows my heart. Well, you're right. The Lord does know your heart. And he knows that it's a wicked heart because you're just saying these things. Oh, you know, uh, God will forgive me. You know, I must keep living this lifestyle, but God will forgive me. God knows my heart. Right. So it says, verse six, and say not his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins for mercy and wrath come from him and his indignation rested upon sinners. So again, you cannot sit there and say that, OK, you know, the Lord knows my heart. The Lord knows, you know. Uh, you know, I, I don't really mean it. Well, actions speak louder than words and your actions are showing that although you're saying the right things, you're saying that, you know, you know, I don't really mean to hurt nobody. I don't really mean to do this, but your actions are saying otherwise. Right. So you cannot, like it says, uh, uh, going back to verse five concerning propitiation, which means to appease a God, be not without fear to add sin unto sin. Right. So you must be fearful as the scriptures say you know uh talks about in the book of sirach if i'm not mistaken about uh you know offending less you know that's what we have to do in this ministry is like we're still going to commit sins but we have to offend less right we're still going to offend but don't be you know intentional about don't or just be lackadaisical about be like ah, okay whatever you know or don't do what people say in the world say god knows me he knows my heart but look at the things that you're doing again actions speak louder than words you know our people say all the time that i love god but our people don't show the lord that uh they love him again actions speak louder than words you cannot just say something you have to do something as it's written of even in the book of james um uh, uh matter of fact uh how's it go basically uh show you my uh works by my faith and i'll show you my uh oh, damn it i might have to get it just to is that James chapter five? I want to quote it because I don't want to make this too long, but um ah uh, uh, suck if I'm making this longer than it needs to be, but I just wanted to really edify and emphasize the point. I know it's James. Okay, here it is. I'll just get the point. This is James chapter 2, verse 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. So it's not just saying, you also have to show the works as well. Show the Heavenly Father that you are, you know, are repentant. Show the Heavenly Father that you don't truly mean it, right? Repent like King David did. Right after he committed the act with Bathsheba, after you know, uh, committing adultery, you know, putting Uriah the Hits out, the Uriah the Hittite out there in the heat of battle and causing him to uh, be put to death, pretty much a murder. You know, after I believe it was Nathan the prophet that came and rebuked, uh, uh, damn it, that distracted me, uh, came and rebuked uh, David, you know, basically saying, Thou art that uh, this man that did all these wicked things. You know, David in Psalm 51 and, uh, well, the whole Psalm, but verse, specifically verse 11, uh, David asking and pleading to the Lord, cast not thy Holy Spirit away from me, right? And return unto me the joy of thy salvation. So this is how we must be in the, uh, in the spirit or, or in the, you know, type of mindset of David. You know, David was told his sins, right? And David didn't sit there and say, ah, I don't really see that, Nathan. I don't know what you're talking about. But I'm going to keep doing me. Or the Lord knows me. And you know the Lord knows I, I, I didn't really mean to fuck up. But you're still doing, you know, wicked things. No, David repented. He, he uh, was in a broken and contrite heart and turned from his wickedness. And that's what we're trying to tell our people to do the same thing, to turn from the wickedness. You may not see it as wickedness because the way the world works today, that these things is like, ah, oh, well, what are you talking about? I don't see what I'm doing is so wrong. But again, we have to look through it, right? Uh, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not upon thine own understanding. You cannot go off of, well, I don't see nothing wrong. With that. What am I doing that's so evil? It is something that is affecting and is bothering the Lord. Right. Just like a child, a child who is ignorant and has not learned 
uh, much in the world because obviously their child won't see what they're doing as an evil thing, won't see that they're doing anything that's wrong. But that's why the father or the parent is there to tell them, don't do this, right? So again, we cannot come from the perspective of what we see. We must come from the perspective of the Lord. Right? And I apologize for misspeaking on verse 4. I apologize about that. But uh, going to verse uh, 7 is the point. It says, Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord, and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come upon thee. I'm sorry, shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, right? And in thy security, right? So the things that you think that you're securing or the things that you think, right, that, uh, you know, you're always going to be safe, whether that be your money, which is the usual thing that people think now, you know, the life that you've built up, right? These are the things that people feel that they're securing, right? In your security, right? And the things that, oh, well, you know, I'm I'm always going to make it go back to work. Excuse me. I'm always just going to uh, keep making my money and be on my grind. You don't know when the Lord's going to punch your clock and you're out of here, right? Our people like to the bag, the bag, the bag, but you got to understand if you dip, right? And what I mean dip, meaning if you have to go back to the spiritual realm, that bag is still going to be here and that bag is going to be here for somebody else. Again, you must build up your relationship with the Lord. So I read verse seven again, it says, make no tearing to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day, right? Or you, if you've heard this word, don't put it off and say, oh, I'll turn back to the Lord, I'll, I'll repent, I'll do this. No. Again, actions speak louder than the words, right? I believe what you guys are saying, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to make a change. No, try to, make, or at least show an effort to try and make a change, right? So continue, it says, For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth, and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance, right? And the day of vengeance was, you know, pretty much the Lord saying, Now, when you go into it, they said, Suddenly she just, you know, passed, which... You know, we can go into that the whole thing of, you know, the rolling up of the sleeves. Is that the reason why she suddenly just, you know, thing? Which a lot of people took that, uh, you know, rolling up of the sleeves. But and we've warned you as well. Don't know what the hell that thing is and you just took it. But, you know, again, our people are hard-headed and don't like to listen. But um, I'll just end it off with one last precept in Second Chronicles 15 and 13. Right, here it is. This is Second Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 13. Uh, that whosoever would not seek the Lord God of Israel, right? And you see it all caps there. When you see all caps, that's the Heavenly Father's name, meaning Yahweh. But also in this time, obviously, through his son, Yahweh Shai. So that whosoever would not seek Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai, God of Israel, the God of you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native American Indians, right? Um, should be put to death, whether small or great, whether man or woman. So it doesn't matter whether you're, you're, you know, you have a high position or you're just a regular uh, individual or you consider yourself a nobody. If you don't turn back to the Lord, the Heavenly Father is going to visit you. And there are many different ways the Heavenly Father can visit you and many different scenarios that the Heavenly Father could put you in, right? Whether it be, like I said, whether it be man or woman. It doesn't matter if you're a man, obviously, and it doesn't matter if you're a, a, a pretty-faced woman or, you know, a very you know, petite, beautiful looking women. It doesn't matter to the Heavenly Father. Beauty doesn't matter to the Heavenly Father. If you're being disobedient, the Heavenly Father is going to put you to death. Now, I believe there's another scripture. I couldn't find it. Where also it mentions even about the children as well, right? So just going back to, you know, just to give a little bit more edification on uh, Job 4 and 7, even with children, you know, the Lord will put children to death as well. That's nothing in the sight of the Lord's eyes. Again, why we emphasize, make no tearing to turn back to the Lord. Because this is just one, this is just, there's many examples, but just using this as a recent example of happening, why not to make no tearing to turn back to the Lord? Because in your security, in you thinking that you're safe and that everything is all good, the Lord can uh, take you out. And you'll be asking and wondering why, but again, you have to come from the respect of the Lord. Why would the Lord do these things? Maybe she has done something that the Lord doesn't like, and that's why the Lord took her. If Because you have to ask yourself, if people are, Right, because in the Christians say they'll say, you know, uh, you so preach about Jesus Christ and things like that. And say that she was such, uh, such and such was such a great uh, person. Such and such did this. Such and such did this for the community. But if such and such was such a pillar in the community and such a great person, why would the Lord take them? 
right? Why would the Lord take a, a person that is needed in this world, right? If they're such a good person, our people must ask these questions, which they don't. And this is why the Lord has set us up to give these answers. A, a contrary to popular belief, our people are not as good as they like to look at themselves or see themselves as. Our people are very wicked and disobedient people, but they don't like to see themselves in that type of light. But this is why we're out here. The Lord has us out here to preach these things and to show our people their transgressions. Cry aloud and spare not. But like I said, I don't want to make this too long. So Lord's willing, this is edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Racha, Kodash, Shalom.